Hello and welcome to today's news bulletin. I'm your host, Julia Cosby. Let's take a look at the headlines. India and Russia have agreed to strengthen their anti-terrorism cooperation. Taliban announced its new caretaker government. Britney Spears' father filed a petition to end her conservatorship. Protests calling for freedom in Afghanistan and condemning Pakistan. A fire in an Indonesian prison has killed at least 41 inmates. The trial for 20 defendants for the Islamic State 2015 Paris attacks that left 130 people dead and hundreds more injured begins on Wednesday, September 8. United Nations human rights monitors have condemned the state of Texas for passing its recent anti-abortion law. 120 civilians have been killed within the span of two days in a village in Ethiopia by Tigray rebellious forces. To begin on Wednesday, the national security chiefs of India and Russia met. At this meeting, the two nations solidified their commitment to working with each other to combat militant groups in Afghanistan. Russia and India both believe that these groups pose a threat to Central Asia as well as India. India is fearful that Pakistani militant groups may use Afghanistan as a base to launch attacks from. Russia, however, is fearful that the issues in Afghanistan could lead to problems in what it regards as its defense flank in Central Asia. As a result, the two nations agreed to cooperate on issues such as anti-terrorism, drug trafficking and illegal migration. In Afghanistan, the Taliban has officially declared its interim government. Mullah Mohammed Hassan Akund is the acting prime minister and Mullah Abdul Ghani Brader is the acting deputy prime minister. Notably, the Taliban has claimed earlier on their government will be inclusive. All their members of the cabinet are men and members of the Taliban. In response, the European Union condemned the Taliban's interim government for not including women and other religious groups. While the Taliban has stated that the cabinet had not been finalized yet, they have not indicated when the official government will come into power in the nation. This has left many apprehensions about whether or not the Taliban leaders appointed into the interim government will willingly leave power when it comes time to form an official government. In other news, hundreds of thousands have been watching the case surrounding Britney Spears' conservatorship. Recently, James Spears, her father, filed to end the court conservatorship, which has controlled Britney's life and money for the past 13 years. James Spears has received anger from the public and from his daughter. Although the conservatorship was established in 2008 when Britney Spears was struggling publicly with her mental health, she has since come forward expressing that she wants to be free to make her own choices. For example, Britney is required under her conservatorship to use an intrauterine device for birth control even though she does not want to use this. According to Newsweek, Britney must ask her father to sign off on every major life decision in the areas of business, health, voting, and even marriage. Back in Afghanistan, hundreds of Afghan nationals continue to protest in Kabul, calling for freedom and condemning the role of Pakistan in Afghanistan's affairs. In fact, protesters could be heard saying, long live Afghanistan, death to Pakistan. The protesters reportedly want to see more inclusive government in power in Afghanistan, as well as for women's rights in the nations to be upheld. To disperse the protesters, the Taliban reportedly fired shots into the air. In other instances, the Taliban allegedly beat protesters on the streets. Turning now to Indonesia, a fire has swept through one prison, killing at least 41 inmates. This fire happened in Jakarta, Indonesia on Wednesday. 80 others were injured. Throughout the day, relatives visited to check that their loved ones were not among those who were killed. Importantly, these prisons were overcrowded. Specifically, the fire started on Block C2, where the capacity for 19 cells was 40 inmates. But triple that amount were housed here. The initial findings indicate that the fire began from an electrical short circuit. In France, the trial of 20 men involved with the Islamic State Paris terrorist attack in 2015 that left 130 people dead and hundreds more injured began on Wednesday, September 8th. At the trial, 1,800 plaintiffs and over 300 lawyers will be present. Of the 20 men accused, Salah Abdeslam is the only one being tried for murder. When he was asked to identify his profession, Salah told the courtroom that he was an Islamic State soldier. It is expected that the trial will take nine months to be completed, with the final verdict expected to be reached in May. In the United States, Texas has recently passed legislature which bans abortion once embryonic cardiac activity is detected. This usually occurs around the six-week mark. Moreover, there is no exceptions to this law, including rape or incest. 
According to The Guardian, abortion providers say that this law immediately and catastrophically reduces abortion access in Texas. Since this legislature has become law, the United Nations Human Rights Monitors have strongly condemned Texas, saying that they are violating international human rights law. According to the chair of the UN's Working Group on Discrimination Against Women and Girls, this legislation might force abortion providers to go underground and lead women to follow unsafe procedures that could result in their death. In Ethiopia, at least 120 civilians residing in the Amhara region were killed in the span of two days by rebellious Tigray forces. The majority of the deceased were reportedly farmers. The act of brutality came amidst a 10-month feud between the Ethiopian federal troops and those committed to the Tigray People's Liberation Front. The conflict has led to thousands of people being killed and two million having to leave their homes. The UN has been critical of the Ethiopian government for blocking aid to Tigray, which has worsened the famine in the region, though the Ethiopian government denies these allegations. However, in the month of August, it has been estimated that at least 150 people have starved to death in Tigray. As a result, the UN and the US have called for an end to the fighting. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of our latest content.